some people coming in. Um, can they hear us right now? Mm -hmm. They can hear us? Yes. <laughs> okay. That's good. All right. Uh, and let me see. Oh, yeah, I see they're, they're chatting. Hi, Carlo and Nikki. Good to see you guys. Um, so why don't we just start? What What's that? Oh, I can see the little comments down there. Okay. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, people are still streaming in, but let me welcome everybody. Okay. And um, first of all, thank our panelists, Paul Estacio, <laughs> Wendell Zercher, Miles McHenry, Catherine Bernath, and Christine Berry. We really appreciate your being here. Um, I will start off by talking a little bit about the school for any non-alumni that are on. And then um, Rachel is gonna read a lovely statement from Graham. And then I'll go through each gallery and each gal and I'll, I'll read a little bit about the gallery. You're all welcome to Eric. Um, <laughs> And then we'll have a presentation of the awards and each gallery will read their winners. So if we can go to the um, manifesto. I don't know if all of the jurors have seen this manifesto, but these are the, these are the artists that signed the founding manifesto. Um, it's something I think we share with all of your galleries. All of your galleries believe strongly in the kind of art that these people were making, as does the school. Uh, so it's a shared heritage. And my feeling is you guys are some of the best galleries and have some of the best programming out there right now. Um, there's so many different things going on in the art world, but the school is about about one of them, one very important one. And we really appreciate galleries that, that share our aesthetic. Um, with that, as an example of our aesthetic and how we see the world, uh, Rachel will read a short hello statement from our Dean Graham Nixon. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here. Um, my name is Rachel Rickert. I'm the exhibitions and alumni coordinator at the studio school, um, as well as an alumni myself. Um, so I have this short statement from Graham. Fast thoughts about weighty goals. Rarely are so many artworks put together that have a collective leitmotif all around. I'm struck by the abundance of one of the most elusive of qualities running through the whole show. Most works have a real weight contained within their perimeter. It's a particularly poignant at this time that the ingredient should be displayed. We think of weight of conscience, weight of air, weight of bodies, weight of endeavor, weight of color, weight of imagery, weight of paint and its presence. It is very hard to have weight in an artwork because you cannot fake it. The British artist Leon Kossoff has the weight of the actual works, thick paint and heavy supports. Yet the weight of his poetry gives the actual impact to the work. The American artist Bob Thompson has the weight of painterly ambition in bringing a cello to contemporary Paris. The Swedish artist Hilma Off Klimp has the weight of color and the spaces between. Although this is a virtual show, it is in its own way very actual. So congratulations to all you image makers and image seekers. Graham Nixon. Congratulations. Lovely. Very nice. It's really nice statement. And um, yeah, we were hoping that Graham could make it in person, but he was he was otherwise scheduled. Very nice to take the time to make that statement. Uh, there's a quick question about whether this is being recorded. Yeah, it is being recorded and we'll have it up on the school's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, and Rachel will let everyone know when that's when that happens. So um, 
Let me start with Christine Berry. We'll get to the part that everybody's looking forward to, hearing who, who the choices are. A little bit about the wonderful Barry Campbell Gallery. Highlighting a selection of post-war and contemporary artists, the gallery fulfills an important gap in the art world, revealing a depth within American modernism that is just beginning to be understood, encompassing the many artists who were left behind due to race, gender, etc. Since its inception, the gallery has been especially instrumental in giving women artists long overdue consideration such as in the 2016 traveling exhibition, Women of Abstract Expressionism. This show featured work by Pearl Fine and Judith Goodwin, both represented by the gallery, along with that of Helen Frankenthaler, Lee Krasner, and Joan Mitchell. The gallery also represents alumna Susan Vesey, who, who by the way is having a show on right now that's really worth seeing, and as well as the estate of Stephen Pace, who I remember lecturing at the school more than once when I was a student there. And the gallery has also worked very closely with Karen Wilkin and been super helpful to our West Coast chapter. Um, Christine, with that, I leave it to you. Well, thank you so much for including me. It's always an honor to be, to do anything with the New York Studio School. It's really a historic school. We think about the artists that came through and the, the artists who started the school, but I think about the artists that are with the school now, graduating from the school, really amazing work. Um, so great to hear words from Graham Nixon always. It's always inspiring to hear from him. So I'm grateful to be here and glad I could have a look at all this wonderful work. I do wish I could have seen it all in person. That is hard. Um, but glad to see it all together. And it was interesting to see it this way as well. Somebody's, somebody's writing, Daniel is writing that he can barely see us. I'm not sure what that means. See? But if anybody, if anybody's having issues seeing us, yeah, please, please put something in the chat and we'll see what we can do to fix it. Um, Meanwhile, why don't we sh why don't we show the first the first choice? So my first choice was Jenny Hager, and I'll I'll talk a little bit about her later. But I have to say this was a wonderful show, and it was very hard to narrow down. Sometimes it's not in these shows, but I have to say this was a beautiful show with so many uh, amazing works of art. So my first first choice is Jenny Hager. Congratulations, Jenny. Uh, second is Edmund Praby. Katie Ruiz. Ro Lowen. Charity Baker. Michael Lian. And Gina Werfel. There's my group. Um, I have to say it was it was hard and I found works across the board that I liked works on paper painting Jenny Hager uh, I have to say I'm biased because we did a West Coast alumni show last year and we have three galleries that sort of lead into each other and a smaller gallery in the back and no one ever wants to hang in that smaller gallery but the, the painting in the, in the very back is one of the best vistas in the gallery. And the minute I saw Jenny's painting, I fell in love and I was like, that will get everybody to the back room. It was a stunning painting. So I have to say when I was gliding through looking on Artsy, uh, her work just really um, jumped out at me. And I love that grid to the side and it pulls you right into that center section that you don't quite really know what's going on, but it's, it's a wonderful wonderful piece and she has a great energy in her work. Um, the, the second choice, I, Edmund Praby, um, I juried last year at the New York Studio School and um, I kept coming back to his work and the same thing happened to me this year. So everyone thinks of me as 
looking at abstract paintings and liking abstract paintings. Um, I studied 17th century Spanish art, so I know a little bit about still life painting. And this is a beautiful work, the perspective, and he sort of pulls you into it. And there's a softness sort of reminiscent of Fairfield Porter. Um, I just, I, I, I love his work. I just, I'm drawn to it. So congratulations, I'm a fan. <laughs> awesome. Uh, the third is Katie Ruiz. This, this drew me in in, an, in another way. I kept coming back to this work um, and I didn't look at the titles. I just kind of went through and, and looked at what grabbed me first. And first of all, the colors in this are amazing and this sort of painterly quality. And I'm staring at this figure and then see the snake and think, what, what, what is this? And historically, there's a lot going through your mind or historically. And then I see the profile of who I believe to be the rainbow man. And it, I, I really find this, um, uh, I can keep going back to this painting. There's, there's something um, just, just very beautiful and strong about it. And I can't quite figure it out. And that's why I like it. And sometimes that's why we like things. <laughs> And I would say on the next one for Rod Lowen, I, I immediately just leaned into this painting. I understood this painting and I connected to it and felt sort of um, a weeping willow quality to it. And I, I love the, the paint and the way the paint is put on and I would love to see this in person. Um, I feel like you're in this painting. It's abstracted, it's abstract, but it's not. Um, and I, I just, this, this to me, uh, it just moved me, this painting. And I don't know if it was also pandemic wise, but I, I felt very like I needed to look at this painting. Um, let's see, Charity Baker is the next one. I just love these chunky, blocky figures. They're sort of like Greek and Roman statues to me. And the, the clouds and the reflections of the clouds falling. I just, this is all about light and so many references to me here, but I like the play of the light and the shadow. And I feel there's, it, it's almost like a stage or a play. There's so much going on in the background with the swimmer then coming forward. And then this other guy in the middle swimming and then over. And I've never looked at like jeans, like back of jeans pockets for so long. It's just really, really a great, interesting painting. And then Michael Meehan, I feel like he's the bomb. Like I just, I love his paintings and the softness of this one is really incredible. And again, I didn't look at the title, so I didn't really know what was going on. And I felt like I was going into the mind or it was pulling me in somewhere. And I kept looking at that chair, is that chair for me? But then there's so much going on in the top part of that painting as well. It's almost, industrial like the roof of it but yet you go you look down and then you're going back up and um i don't know i felt like there was a Char charles Sheeler element to it but this beautiful softness and then i thought of like sugimoto and like an empty theater as well so i just love this painting i love his work and same with gina werfel like i just feel she's a very purposeful painter this is uh, a really uh, masterful abstraction here. Um, I'm not sure if there's a reference. I think it's called Intersection. Um, it, it reminds me a bit of Stuart Davis, just this activity. I can almost hear this painting, but Gina is a wonderful, wonderful painter. And I just, this is, this is, should be sort of a lesson on how to paint this painting. Its composition is perfect. Everything about it is great. Awesome. Wonderful comments there. By the way, there are thank yous from Jenny and Katie and maybe some others that I missed scrolling, but beautiful comments, Christine. Um, we're going to keep this part moving, but to the to the audience, there is a Q&A uh, little button at the bottom of your screen. So if you do have questions, um, we'll probably take them more towards the end, but if something occurs to you while someone speaking, feel free to click on it and type in a question. Next, we have Paul Estacio from Hollis Taggart Contemporary. Hollis Taggart was founded in 1979 with a mission to present museum quality works of, or, of art and offer personalized support in all aspects of art collecting, 
with a particular focus on the post-war era. Some of the artists most closely involved with the studio school at the gallery include Alexander Calder, Nicholas Caroni, and Elaine de Kooning. Also, the gallery worked with Mercedes Matter to put on an, an, an exhibition of her father's work, Arthur B. Carls. Today, the gallery's program has grown to encompass contemporary practitioners as a vital component to art historical discourse and has a new space dedicated to the contemporary division, which is run by Paul. Congratulations, Paul. That's, that's terrific. Wow. Found a new division in, in a great gallery like that. Oh, thank you so much. These two intersecting threads offer Hollis Taggart audiences and clients a dynamic and diverse set of offerings. Paul, feel free to take it away and announce your selections. Yeah, sure. Uh, but hi, everybody. Thank you all. And thank you very much, Michael and Rachel, for uh, it's, it's an honor to be a part of this. Um, I was very surprised and honored to be uh, a part of the panel. So thank you all very much and to all the artists making works. Um, yeah, my name is Paul Evstathieu, uh, director at Hollis Taggart. I've been, um, I'm a second generation art dealer. I've uh, been art dealing for 18 years, curating the last four, and now it's officially a year since I've joined Hollis Taggart. Um, so yeah, it's exciting to be spearheading the contemporary division. Very excited. Um, but yeah, I really, uh, yeah, thank you all for, for having me. And you're off to a great start. How how old are you? Have you have you had your one year anniversary yet? How old am I, or how old have well, I? Well, I mean, I mean the contemporary division. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Hollis Hollis started in '79. I was born in '79, so uh, no. So how it, how old how old is the contemporary division? Is it is it more? Have you been through a full season, or is this your first? Yes, year? June. So June to June. Yes. So it's been Got a it. full year now. Yeah, which has been exciting. So. Uh, yeah, we've worked with each other for a long time. I mean, Hollis is, is a great, uh, you know, person to work for, a great company. And, you know, we have that same spirit and vision and passion with the arts that we really connect. And, uh, yeah, it was just a perfect, perfect fit. But, yes, it's been a year, officially a year. Fantastic. Let's, let's see what you selected. First selection is Amanda Church. Stephanie Franks, Michael Ma uh, Monsky, Monsky, Laura Well, Becky Yazdan, Dina Strum. Strum. Sorry, I'm used to getting my last name devoured. So sorry. <laughs> sorry. But yes, this was uh, this was like uh, Christine said. This was definitely a tough choice. I really wish I could have seen all of these in person. Um, but I just uh, went through it like I normally look at artwork. I just uh, you know feel what I, I what attracts me energetically and the movements, and I just don't overthink things. It's more of a of a gut instinct. Um, I really love the, you know, Amanda Church, who was my first choice there. I really love the, you know, the forms and the, the colors of the works. It just felt very fresh and very positive um, and, ener you know, energized me. Uh, Stephanie Franks, um, same thing. I really love the colors. Like I can almost put these in, in a group show. Um, but I, yeah, I just loved you know, and I wish I could have seen these in person because it's very tough on, on the screen. But Stephanie, yeah, I really love the colors there and, and the draw. Um, and then on to Michael's work. You know, I remember when I looked at this piece, I really loved in the, in the left corner, the purple. And then this almost looks like a handkerchief. I'm, I'm curious to see if would ask him after if there's uh, some figurative um, aspects to this piece. And for Laura Well, I, re I really love this work. I found it very, very soothing, very calming. Um, almost reminded me in a way of Barnaby Furness's works. Um, yeah, there was just something I, I, I really loved in this piece and just, yeah, it was very calming and soothing. 
And Becky, Becky's work, I really liked. I almost, you know, it was timeless in a way. I felt like it could have been a, one of the abstract expressionists, or there was something that, that was channeling an, an older energy, um, which I really loved. And Dina's work. So at first, when I looked through everything, I picked the five and I thought I was done. And then I wanted to go back because I remember there was one piece that kept calling to me and I went back and it was Dina's piece. And I really loved this work, just the composition here. And even if you look up, you know, in the ceiling, there was just so much detail and energy and movement in this in the ceiling. And here you could see like the whites and the multiple layers that she painted on this work. And it's it's a room, but it's also very, there's many parts of this work I feel are, you know, if you were to cut it up on its own, it could be its own really beautiful piece. And I believe that's a diptych uh, as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, those those were my uh, my choices and it was a really amazing group and it was it was difficult to pick, but I really connected with all six of those artists. Terrific, great set of choices and congratulations to all of Paul's choices. Um, congrats guys. We'll keep this moving. We'll move to Miles McHenry from Miles McHenry Gallery. The gallery represents the estates of Hans Hoffman and Esteban Vicente, as well as along Guy Yanai. I remember studying with Esteban, by the way, really, really a great painter. And there's a great show of Esteban's work right now at the gallery. Chris. I think he froze. Uh oh, yes, I think Michael froze. So, Miles, do you want me to just go ahead and share your sure? Let's try and, uh, you know run run through these. All right. The gallery's roots trace back to the very famous Andre Emmer Gallery, which was sold to Nates. My, Miles, there was a quote on your on your website I really loved, and it it captures the essence of the studio school, I think. And the quote is about about the gallery's program in general. Painting and drawing predominate because they are basic, simple technologies that record often in exceptionally nuanced ways, the gesture, the gestures and maneuvers of a consciousness in action, making decisions, adapting to circumstances, working through rough spots and coming to conclusions only to start all over again in the next painting or drawing. That's a beautiful sentence. Do you know where it comes from? It really, it really jives so strongly with the school's aesthetic. No, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, people, you know, when you try to, uh, you know, kind of expand and write on, on your gallery and, uh, you know, what comes to mind. So it just comes out of, uh, you know, thinking and talking about, uh, you know, art with uh, artists and friends and colleagues. So, uh, yeah, we try to, and I'm someone who, who doesn't love to talk a lot about art. I think, you know, kind of Hopper said it best when he said, if you, if you could say it, there'd be no reason to paint it. So uh, I don't think, you know, we need to get bogged down with a lot of, a lot of art speak, but uh, nonetheless, uh, you know, we, we wrote it and kind of put it on our website. So there you have it. Terrific. Yeah, it really resonated with me. Why don't we why don't we move straight on to your selection? Yeah. So to kind of just, you know, echo what uh, Christine and Paul had to say, you know, thank you for for inviting me to, to you know, comment on, uh, you know, on this and be a part of it. I'm not sure I'm, I'm qualified to, but nonetheless, I'm happy to be here. And um, yeah, it was it was, you know, I have to say it was uh, I wish I could have uh, seen all these wonderful works in, in person, but it was uh, you know, kind of uh, a bright spot during a dark time this spring was to, uh, it was a, a, a lot of fun to tackle this project. So thank you again to, to everyone, to Michael, to you and, and to all the artists. Um, so yeah, these things are, I'll preface this by, you know, obviously these things are so subjective and there were so many wonderful works to choose from, but uh, the first one uh, I selected, and I think this is in no particular order, um, we'll see what pops up on the screen here, Rachel. There it is. Marie-Claude uh, Jaguer. Um, so there's the first one. 
<laughs> That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And yeah. We'll drink. We'll drink to that, Miles. That was that was that, that was, was lovely. That was hot. That was hot. <laughs> and then the next one is uh, as Elizabeth Hazen. And then Claudia Doring Baez, Susan English, Laura Koretsky, Sarah King, and Debbie Margolet. So there they are. Beautiful so, selection. Yeah. And um, yeah, just to kind of share a little insight or my thought process into it, you know, like Paul said, you know, it just, you know, I'm a terrible poker player. You know, I, uh, you know, things are pretty immediate for me, and uh, you can you can see it on my face. Uh, with with Marie Claude's work, I just thought it was a really charming, uh, you know, depiction of something we can all kind of relate to. It's just this intimate, inner, you know, generational moment, and you feel like uh, you can kind of close your eyes and smell oatmeal and brown sugar in the kitchen. And I'm a sucker for that you know matisse and compositional device of the landscape through the open window in the back so uh i just thought it was a really charming touching you know lovely work and uh i picked it so and then the next uh selection great, I remember, great uh, choice yeah I, I liked it a lot my next selection was elizabeth hazen uh, again you know I, I had immediate knee-jerk reaction to the work i've seen elizabeth's work uh you know, in New York kind of over the years. And uh, I just always gravitate towards them. I think they're, you know, dare I say it, very beautiful kind of depictions of, of kind of, you know, I read them as topographical views, you know, abstractions, but kind of rooted in the landscape or the natural world, which kind of goes back to, you know, Hoffman's core ideology that abstraction couldn't be self-referential, that it had to be rooted in the natural world. Uh, and I just thought, you know, really lush, you know, beautiful, you know, painting. So my hat's off to you, Elizabeth. Fantastic. Next one, Claudia Doring Baez. You know, again, I mean, I thought this was a really uh, satisfying painting. You know, I look at it and I think of, uh, you know, kind of neo-expressionistic painters, you know, that kind of emerged out of whether it was Germany or Italy or, or New York in the early 80s. Uh, I love, you know, all the, the references to art history that they're chock full of. And again, I just love this kind of moody brooding kind of wagnerian you know palette and sense to it and like i said just uh just a meaty little painting that i was quite taken with uh, i think the next one uh, is susan english again i mean you know great intuitive colorists i like uh you know uh you know how she creates space using you know form and color and uh just the, the light and uh listen if you if you know me or know a little bit about kind of uh, the background of the gallery you can see how this would be uh, clearly a, a, a natural selection but a uh, wonderful painting uh awesome. laura you know next again I, I you know there's a lot going on in this painting uh you know from a, a narrative point of view and you know caught my eye and i was trying to decipher what was happening in it and the reflection in the toaster of a group of people at a, at a holiday celebration, but yet, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of, uh, you know, the moments being kind of reflected in a very mundane object of the toaster. You have someone using an iPhone to capture. So I just thought it was a, an interesting kind of painting and, and uh, a kind of hybrid of, uh, you know, technology of modern day technology with an iPhone versus, you know, kind of uh, something as archaic as a candle or a, or a toaster from, you know, which you know, could be 70, 80 years old. Uh, next one, Sarah King. It's a wonderful kind of painterly, uh, delicious, you know, uh, work kind of, again, I like the way she kind of carves up space. I like these big loaded moves that come together to, you know, render uh, this, this figure. And then uh, my last choice, you know, Debbie, uh, her painting, you know, again, you know, immediately I started to try to decipher the narrative. She offers you, you know, something and, uh, and really it's deeply psychological, you know, creating this kind of, you know, interior world and I, and I love the palette of it. So those are uh, kind of uh, how I arrived at the choices I arrived at. So, but like, again, uh, pleasure to see everyone's work and 
uh, it was an honor to, to, to comment on it. So thank you. And thank you, Miles. Great choice. And I don't think I've mentioned this to you before, but you actually had the most of your selections. You had, there were three artists that other galleries chose. And that's always exciting when that happens. So um, we'll move on to Catherine Bernath with Public Swim. Uh, and we'll see that she chose two of the same artists as you. We'll see who those are. Meanwhile, um, Catherine is half of Public Swim Gallery, an emerging gallery that is definitely on the right track. Founded in 2019 by curator Madeline Mermal and artist Catherine Fenton Bernath, Public Swim is an art gallery, a project space, and a community meeting space. Accessible and friendly, lively and warm, it is a space where everyone feels welcome and active viewing is encouraged. Engage with the art, ask questions, express your opinions. Public Swim champions emerging artists with a focus on contemporary themes rooted in the now. I'm also happy to say the gallery has exhibited Carlos Denselmi and our own Rachel Rickard, who's here with us tonight, who are both alumni of the school. Catherine? Just on me. Hi there, everyone. Um, I have to say that I echo um, everybody else's sentiments of, uh, of feeling very privileged and flattered that we were included in this group. Um, it was uh, super tough. Madeline and I, I feel a little like I have my, I have half of me here and I'm representing her, but um, we had a really tough choice on going through these uh, really fantastic works that were presented. So thank you so much um, to the studio school and uh, Michael and Rachel for having us and um, uh, and that lovely introduction, Michael. Um, I feel like, yeah, we have just come out the block in January. Um, we're just sort of catching our breath and with COVID, it's, uh, it's definitely been an interesting start to um, what uh, we blasted off with incredible works um, on our on our launch. Um, and now I guess we're, we, we sort of don't have that legacy of many of the galleries here that um, sort of figuring what our next steps are. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a interesting time to say the least. Uh, but I'll start with the choices that we selected. Um, and I'm really excited about all of these works, um, starting with uh, Case Jernigan. I hope, I hope I'm pronouncing the, the, uh, the names right. Um, what we really liked about Case's work was uh, just this sort of felt like reminiscent of sort of shadow puppetry. Um, this uh, playful abstract imagery, um, the amount of chromatic palette that um, was here just was was a really playful gesture, and um, I responded to it immediately. Um, yeah, I thought this was this was a this was a great piece. Um, Laura Koretsky was um, was next for us, um, and I think. Miles, you also. That's our, first, that's our first double winner, by the way. That's Laura yeah. was also selected by Miles. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll echo what Miles said. I think this sort of um, old world ritual of the menorah in the foreground and, and this group with um, this gesture of the cell phone and um, trying to capture an image, yet the subject matter um, was sort of encapsulated in these, um, I would also say the ritual of making toast in the morning. Um, objects was was super interesting to, to both Madeline and I. Um, our next uh, selection was Sarah King. Again, this like generosity of seeing the artist's hand in the work and this um, sensuality, this um, voluminous, um, uh, uh, just 
uh, yeah, the voluminous um, body, her capturing this private moment. I think the title also as a mother myself, kick in the ribs, I think um, I'm her grabbing her stomach. I'm assuming she is pregnant and maybe that's wrong, but that's how I read it into the, into the narrative of the story. And, and thinking that, you know, motherhood does offer this, uh, you know, double-sided. Um, so I thought the experience, so I thought the, uh, I think both of us um, were captured with this work. Um, Gary Nichols, uh, the palette here, I thought was, um, I should say we, I think this was, you know, Madeline, um, we, we both poured over the decision making on this. So I think um, I'll have to say that Madeline was very captivated with this piece. Um, myself as well. The palette is beautiful. Um, I like this sort of imagined landscape. And again, the title here, Ship Planter, was curious. Um, but uh, I think this is just a beautiful, um, yeah, gorgeous piece. Um, our, our next selection was Serena K. Laverne. Um, this was, you know, I think uh, within the gallery and our selections right now, um, which we're still trying to form on on how and, and what is 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 coming into the space. Um, I think we're always sort of in this playful edge of um, of uh, I think we both enjoy like uh, these fantastical dark edged themes, and I think this captured both our imaginations. Um, and lasso the sun exactly what that was um what that was uh pointing to um you know these skeletal bodies are we too close to the sun are we in hell is there an exit plan with the ladder are we trying to get to the sun and then these uh these this dark palette with this sort of modern edge of the, the pinks and the purples um I don't know. It was. I think it was. Uh, it was uh, a curious combination, and I think we were both kind of intrigued. Um, David Rich is their next selection, and I think we both responded to this bold color palette. Um, that the subjects are looking at something that we can't quite see what what it is. At first, I thought, are they playing a video game? Um, there was a nostalgia in that. Um, uh, and then that they are, we're looking at them and we're trying to see what they're looking at. Um, but yeah, I think the 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 boldness and the the generosity here um, is what we responded to in this piece. Um, and the last the last uh, piece, Susanna Schlem, um, you know, this was, again, something that uh, I think within our own, uh, Madeline and my, uh, uh, our own personal taste and works, we're always thinking about sort of um, this, boundary between uh, this uh, domestic space of what we should be doing, what these these private versus public. And I feel like this piece, um, the age of the subject is sort of um, ambiguous and uh, it's a, definitely a private moment. Um, should we be looking? I think the sensual palette also sort of uh, touches on uh, that sort of voyeuristic and should we or should we not be in this particular space um so yeah i think that's that that sums it up terrific great job catherine seriously great <laughs> job and great job on getting the gallery started Especially thank you well again it's really time. a privilege to be here and thank you so much for having us and it was a really there was so many amazing works in this in this grouping. So, like, congratulations! And it was it was hard to to narrow it down to these few. Well, some great choices. Before before we get to Gwenaly, um, Rachel, no one 
and maybe there are no questions, but no one has asked a question. And um, it's knowing, knowing our crowd as I do, it's really surprising to me. Does everybody know that there is a little button and <laughs> if you click on it, you can, you can ask a question and I'll read it, I'll share it with the panel. Yes, there's a Q&A feature in the bottom bar that everyone should see. Definitely write in your questions, um, viewers. You also have the option to hit a little thumbs up symbol next to a question if you see one that you like um, and you really want answered. So definitely write in your questions because soon we'll be switching to Q&A. So our last gallery is um, Gwenaly Zercher from Zercher Galleries. We're thrilled to have Gwenaly as part of our, our little group. Zercher and Gwenaly represent Kyle Staver, Lynn Umloff, and June Leaf, among many others. And we'll also be including alumna Claudia Doring Baez, Elisa Jensen, Barbara Laub, and Susan Mistrangelo in a group exhibition called 11 Women of Spirit, opening September 10th. Zercher Gallery in New York was founded by Gwenaly and Bernard Zercher in 2009 as a New York branch of their Paris-based gallery, Zercher. Both founders have had several significant art monographs published by Rizzoli, including Georges Braque. Bernard and Gwenaly opened their gallery in Paris in 1992 and were encouraged to show painters and U.S. artists by their friend Joan Mitchell. And there's a beautiful photo of, of Gwenaly and her husband and Joan in a boat in Paris on a river, which is, which is on Facebook right now and on the web on Gwenaly's website. Gwenaly, you, you've, you're lovely now, but you were really a raving beauty back then when in that picture. Uh, it was very, very nice to see that. Since Bernard's passing in early 2017, Gwenaly continues to New York and now partners with different galleries in Europe. So with that, I turn it over to you, Gwenaly. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Rachel, for inviting me. This is it was really a pleasure. I was really impressed by uh, your commitment the project. Um, so um, now coming to the selection, I found it extremely difficult to make my own judgment just looking at one work only. Also, um, I didn't feel comfortable uh, to look at websites uh, either. So I was inclined um, to select a work by an artist I'm already familiar with. Uh, which is actually seven, five artists out of the seven uh, I selected. So there are like five, I'm uh, pretty familiar with the work, and two like outsiders. Okay, Susan, yeah. Susan Mastrangelo, uh, Sufficient Reduction 2020. Um, um, actually, I'm very interested in her uh, use of materials. Uh, Susan uses uh, yarn, uh, cord filler, and fabric, uh, which she, she uses for her compositions. She, she works very intuitively uh, without any uh, preconceived idea. And um, her approach uh, translates this natural flow and rhythm. And this is what I um, really enjoy when I see her work. Susan is going to be part of the uh, one of the 11 Women of Spirit. And uh, I'm very thrilled uh, to have her. Maybe I should continue. OK, Barbara Lobby, Abstract Angel, Oil and Gold Leaf on Canvas. Um, Barbara is also one of the uh, 11 women of spirit, and um, I really like uh, the fact that her work is rooted in, uh, uh, in the history of abstraction. Um, I was drawn to her mark making and um, her treatment, a very refined treatment of the painting surface. Uh, her painting is spiritual. Uh, healing and transformative. And I think this is just what we want to look at now, uh, considering this, uh, the pandemic. So um, thank you, um, Barbara. And now I would rather uh, go to um, uh, Claudia, who is uh, the third artist 
Thank you. Claudia, uh, you're the winner. I mean, uh, you've already, you've also been selected by Miles. This is fantastic. Um, I'm thrilled to have you. Um, I'm interested in the way you appropriate um, uh, history, Western history of art um, and recreate uh, the, the, the images in oil painting in a very personal, contemporary, uh, expressionistic way. Um, this, this painting, Brassai Paris Gala, is one of the series I'm going to include uh, in the 11 Women of Spirit. So I invite everybody to come and see more of uh, Claudia. Um, now, um, yeah, well, Jeannie, why not? Uh, Jeannie is um, someone I've known uh, for quite a long time, uh, seeing her work in New York in many group shows and also in Paris because she was shown by La Galerie Lana Sable. Um, I am actually, I've always been fascinated by her uh, drawings. I think she's a fantastic, she's really fantastic uh, works on paper. And um, I also like her videos, which I saw in New York um, two years ago. And this painting is uh, Seti. It shows how she's interested uh, in film. Uh, it has this uh, cinematic quality and uh, beautiful touch. And I think she's a very uh, accomplished uh, painter too. So thank you, Jeannie. Uh, Elizabeth Condon. Um, Elizabeth, Elizabeth was um, uh, included in uh, the show Cal Staver curated in the gallery um, last year, Dance With Me. And um, I am very interested in uh, her treatment. Uh, and her, the treatment of the surface is very beautiful. Uh, she um, uh, is also uh, interested in the decorative motives. Uh, she has this kind of Matisse quality, uh, which I like particularly. And now we have, so I think we have the two outsiders, Howard Kalish, sculptor. Um, this is the betrothal of Punch and Judy, drawn from a, a puppet show. Um, I'm interested in, uh, in Kalish's unique technique uh, for making figurative sculpture in concrete with uh, archival concrete paint, which makes it suitable for indoors and outdoors. Um, I think this is a, a joyful and a great uh, piece, uh, and it's not very big, 36 by 27 by 23 inches. And last but not least, so, uh, Yale is an outsider, and in my selection, um, uh, Yale Dresner is, grew up in Haifa, Israel, and um, I I was drawn to her, um, her interest in the body. I think this is part of a series, split torso, uh, the mini mini torsos uh, she uh, painted recently, and uh, I found her painting uh, extremely uh, current. So this is it. Fantastic, Wendelie. Wonderful, wonderful choices and um, great discussion. Um, we do have we do have two questions. I'm very happy, and if that's all we have, then we'll just all go on to dinner. But hey, I'll direct this to Paul and Catherine, and then if the other panelists want to chime in, it's not the easiest question. Uh, it's from Carlos Rekovics, who, by the way, is a terrific sculptor and does some beautiful, very powerful, large black and white drawings. But the question is, how are galleries, especially galleries like, like yourselves and the kind of art you value and champion, where it's so important to be in front of the actual object, how are you dealing with the, I mean, it's been a very quick transition to digital now. No one, nobody even doubts that you would look at work digitally, that, that you would pay enormous sums of money for digital work uh what what does this mean for the actual object itself and the gallery that invests money in storing and showing the actual objects who is the question to 
So the question oh. was, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> team effort, team effort. <laughs> it's a good thing. Do you want me to repeat it or? Did, no, no, that was This is for you. And then Catherine, if you want to chime in afterwards and Miles and Emily and Christine, you're all welcome to comment as well. Yeah, I mean, I feel that I guess two parts of the question. One was how we're looking at work and maybe finding artists and look, and the other is from the, I guess, from the sales perspective of it and putting on shows. Is that correct? Yeah. How, how do you, how do you look at art digitally when you know that the object is, has a whole different set of aesthetic? Yeah. I mean, art, I mean, I still feel, I know we're going all through this, this really tough time. Uh, and it, it's not, you know, it's, it's everybody. This is a human issue, and and we're all staying positive. And um, but I think you know, art really still needs down to the roots. Still needs to be seen in person. I mean, it's 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 such a physical thing, and the energy of the work. I mean, you can look at a foreign screen or or from your laptop. It still doesn't. You know, as we all know, paintings and artwork is alive and breathing and, and has something special to it, but uh, it's the best we can do. And I guess as for for finding artists, you know, I'll look on Instagram or I'll, I've been doing uh, Zoom studio visits or whoever's like in my tri-state proximity, I have been doing some visits and, um, you know, social distancing and using the masks. Um, but yeah, and also I guess from the other perspective, it's it's a challenge. We'll all get through it eventually. Hopefully, the vaccine comes out soon. Um, but uh, yeah, I just I just think it's, you know more doing um, trying to get you know from my perspective, I'm trying to meet people more and better in person. I enjoy meeting people, talking with them. So by appointment, um, the next show we have, I'm actually doing in Southport, Connecticut, which is where I live because I felt that Chelsea wasn't going to be um, doing as great right now, at least for a little bit of time. So I'm just trying to adapt to as well because it's changing every week. So uh, just trying to still stay proactive and and keep things going, and it, it'll it'll be back 100. percent Fantastic, Catherine. Any any thoughts you want to add? I think just, you know, with us, Instagram was such a huge, um, important source for us looking and viewing at work um, that, uh, you know, that has just increased. So um, the uh, we're lucky that we started with the idea of sort of breaking down um, the gallery mode that we would be um, very open to uh, what the artist's needs were. So we're sort of functioning as, I think, a project space slash gallery space. So that sort of lent itself to creative moves when COVID hit that we um, we have a, uh, a street view window. So we've, we've really shrunk our gallery and created a, a more intimate experience from the street so um, installations now, instead of um, having multiple pieces within the gallery, we're sort of um, tapering down to just a few items and being able to create an experience, an installation experience um, within the window. Um, and how that might manifest, I don't know, but you know, our current installation right now is with three artists who um, uh, who have taken the space and uh, we had um, Sarah Kim do uh, uh, an in-person ins uh, painting installation of the wall, um, creating kind of conversation around swing by and see what's up. And um, Patrick Mahundro is, uh, he has um, created uh, like a plant exchange. So his work, he did an installation of, um, uh, objects um, and plants and sort of this post uh, apocalyptic world experiences is, is sort of the, the themes we're working with. Um, but he's there on the sidewalk, um, gesturing uh, to the community, like trying to connect with the community um, with these uh, small pots that he's made um, and plants. Um, so 
yeah, we're, we're, you know, constantly thinking about creative ways of how we can connect with um, our audience. Um, and I think with COVID, this has just pushed the conversation even more into the forefront of like, what, um, what does it mean to connect with somebody, you know, and how can you do that? Like, is, is um, a studio visit on Zoom, um, how can that be an intimate experience? Um, so I think the artists and, and we want to we want to create experiences that are exciting for the artists, um, and in turn, our our audience will um, find something a little different in this space, which is is how we started. But it's just like with COVID, now everything's just like it's been a new conversation <laughs> every day. Um, yeah. I think it's interesting because you have a lot of old school sort of gallerists here and you know we have a shop on 24th street on the ground floor and we have an exhibition going here and this idea of pivoting so quickly is i don't know it's hard to for me to adjust to and we have been doing it but and i know we've been doing a lot more video and a lot more video interviewing but I, you know, I still fight for the gallery and say what we do is important and having exhibitions of artists work solo as exhibitions like I hope we can carry on and I hope people will come because I do think having a full show, you know, you see something online and you see one painting and it's fine if you know who the artist is. But if you don't know who the artist is, you've never seen the surface. Susan Bexie paints on Belgian linen, stains the linen. You cannot see that from a photo or a video, how, how, how hard you try. So yeah. it was interesting for us that we kind of quickly shifted to video, which is awkward. And um, fortunately, it worked for us. When we shut down, we had an Ida Kohlmeyer show, and, and Roberta Smith did see the video. But that was our quote unquote viewing room. We had put up a video of our Ida Kohlmeyer show, and it became a virtual show that you had to see, thank goodness. But I don't know. It's a, it's a tough one, and we all were yeah, working hard and spent a lot of money, true. and I think it, it's, it's hard. So I just want to get that out there, that we're working hard and trying to keep doing what we're doing. Terrific. Super, super comment. We, we just have time for one more question. We've promised all of our super cooperative gallerists that we'd hard to stop at 730. But uh, Gwenaly, Sasha Silverstein is asking about uh, what was um, Joan Mitchell like back in the day? How did you get to know her? Are this, we've heard so many different stories about what a tough cookie she was. Do you, do you care to comment? Well, it's, it's a, first it's a very long sto story, so I cannot uh, tell you everything, but uh, I mean, And we only have two minutes. Okay, well, <laughs> it's important to me and to us and she was a great push to the gallery uh, when we were showing a painting in Paris. So, um, you know, I mean, I only have good memories with her. And uh, I know the, the stories are different, but I, I just disagree because I, we had a, a very intimate uh, relationship and she was a strong, a, a really strong push uh, to what we do now and to what I believe in, which is painting. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, a big, big thank you to everyone. There are a couple more questions coming in. I'm sorry we can't get to them now, but I will definitely try and follow up. Um, Miles, if it's not putting you on the spot too much, would you care to have the last word and, and say a, a final thought to share with everybody? Um, just, I guess, uh, you know, I, I kind of agree wholeheartedly with Christine when she said that. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, there's no substitution for going to see a thoughtful, curated show in a bricks and mortar gallery and interact with the work, you know, physically or bodily. Um, and, and, you know, I really don't see, I mean, I think all this other content uh, that we're producing, you know, during this time is, is great as a kind of a, a addendum to, you know, what happens at the gallery. But I, you know, I might be a dinosaur, but, uh, uh, hopefully a young dinosaur, but a dinosaur nonetheless. But I, I, you know, don't ever bet against New York and don't ever, you know, think that uh, there's not going to be a time where uh, we're going to all be back in the galleries and, and dancing in the street again. So, uh, you know, I look forward to that day. 
and uh, seeing seeing everyone that joined us tonight. And uh, uh, I, I hope you'll visit and visit often when you're able to. And I look Fantastic. forward to my colleagues. Fantastic. Thank, thank you all both, both Rachel and I and everybody at the school and the alumni were super grateful for all the time and effort you gave. You were really, really completely unselfish. And I know that there are many, many things competing for your time. So we're extremely grateful and um, we look forward to continuing to get to know you. Hopefully we can send some business your way if, if we can all, we'll definitely try to. And uh, thank you again to everybody. Uh, thank, thank you so you much. Okay. okay. Bye. 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 Bye.